know what it is. This is extremely moderate. It's with your boy talking black Canadian. Uh, I'm sitting with my man KB. We just uh, trying to talk, man. Just have a conversation. You know what I'm trying to say? That's what this is about. It's about um, us being able to get together and hear other ideas and uh, be able to talk about things. So uh, I don't know what we're going to start off with. We're just kind of going off the cuff at this moment. So what's up with you, Kurt? Man, welcome to Extremely Moderate. Um, y'all know what it is, man. We just wanted to come here, throw thoughts off of each other, see where we at mentally. Um, you know, challenge people to question, challenge people to dialogue and not to be afraid of, of dialogue and debates because that's how we get better, man. You know, iron sharpen iron, the Bible say, you know, and sometimes you need that friction in order to get to a truth. You know what I'm saying? So we just... We just want to talk about today's topic, which is, you know, how we feel about the biblical truth and the Bible and, you know, the different views that's out there, the different religions, um, and basically where we stand today. We're not sitting here saying um, we know everything, that we have full understanding. Um, we actually just sitting here just trying to dialogue and throw thoughts off each other, you know what I'm saying? So... Welcome to the podcast. It's your boy KB2, like I said, and Yo, I'm talking black Canadian, what's going on? Poking back Canadian. Y'all already know. So we was actually uh, talking a little bit before we started filming, and we're gonna jump right back into it. Um, we're talking about is is the Bible something that we have to subscribe subscribe to? Or can we just run off of our basic logic? Can we find truth in the understanding of right and wrong in our own brains through our experiences, um, through our life's journeys, through the information we got through friends, family, uh, books, to whether if that book is Marcus Garvey, whether that book is Malcolm X, whether that book is a BMX biography, you know what I'm saying? Like, or the Bible. Talking about, you know, biblical truth. We're all people who at one point of our lives were calling ourselves profession, professing uh, Christians who, you know, felt like we were in the right state of mind when it comes to studying the Bible knowing truth and now we're in a place where we're challenging some of the things that we used to believe well not all of us mostly me um i think we all are trying to challenge the things we believe but i think for my brother i don't want to speak for him you know it's still in a place where he feels like the bible has uh, validity as far as um truth and i'm starting to get to a place where I'm actually looking at the Bible as a form of controlling people. Um, do I think that there's truth in the Bible? Yes. Um, but I'm starting to come to a place where through my decisions, through my experiences, uh, I'm starting to see that the Bible can not only give you truth, but it also can leave you captivated to the point that you are not even a place in a place where you're being mobile mentally you're being stuck and um, it justifies uh, people doing wrong to you um, and turning you other cheek so people can keep smacking you up it's basic logic to know you know I shouldn't live my life trying to murder I should try to live my life with a positive energy with love and to uplift people rather than, you know, casting evil energy or wicked energy or bad energy, as you would call it, on the people and in your everyday life. Um, so my question to you, mm -hmm. token Canadian, what'd you say? What'd you... I'm Tony. I'm, I'm just Tony. We're just talking black Canadian. Token black Canadian. My question that I pose to you is, is it wrong to say, look, 
I don't necessarily call myself a Christian, a Catholic, a Muslim, or a Jehovah Witness, or a Mormon, just all these religions. But I subscribe to looking at things with my human eye, discerning them, and um, basically uh, discerning them through my decisions and through my experiences, mm -hmm. and, and basically putting them through that filter to have understanding. Is that wrong or does it have to be through a book that someone says they were given the knowledge from God or the Holy One or a Holy I, Angel? Well, I would say I think that every, almost everything that we have known before uh, modern times is either from that or influenced from that. So if you believe it or not, it's already in the way that we communicate. So, I no, I don't think it's wrong because that's all a human being has is to use their mind to figure out things. So no, of course that's Which is mind. psychology, right? No, mm -hmm. it's just human interaction. You know, that's when I study psychology. The first chapter of the book that I read was that psychology is actually <coughs> the basic. Um, logic of human communication. Okay. That's what psychology is. It's the way humans communicate. Well, not just communicate, but interact. Yeah. Interact, communicate, dialogue, talk, mm -hmm. think. Yeah. Um, that's what <coughs> psychology is. It's how we um, connect with one, one another. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. So, do you feel that the Bible is absolute truth. Uh, I don't know if, I don't think, I believe in absolute truth. I don't know if anybody's ever find out, found absolute truth, so probably not, no. Do you think that everyone that subscribes to the Bible would agree with that statement? No. They would probably go on to say that the Bible is absolute truth. Yeah. Um, do you see a concern with that? Yeah, um, a little bit, but the way I look at it is that there's so much other things that people take, like the Bible or any other thing, uh, comic book, video games, tattoos, piercings, can go extreme with it and fuck up your life or be happy with it or be nice to people for it. So to me, it's not that scary, you know what I mean? Um, I think that in the time that we're at, that a lot of stuff has been... Um, a lot of uh, cultural changes has happened for the negative ways that um, people have used the Bible uh, as a weapon to uh, hurt specific groups. That has changed, and uh, we need more time for it to continue to change. But other than that, you know, I, you know. I understand. Um, I don't know. I'm in a place in life where I feel like. Um, I've been studying the Bible uh, probably from the age of 18, I'm 30 now, uh, so it's a good, what, 12 years, um, which is not too long if you actually think about it, yeah. um, but I'm very diligent, so to me, 12 years is a long time for a person of my stature, because I don't, I don't half-ass it, <laughs> you know what I mean, if I... When I study something, if I have an interest in something, I go full force in that mug, you know, and I'm trying to learn everything about it. I'm trying to watch podcasts. I'm studying, I'm reading, I'm listening to, you know, different people who subscribe to it. I'm, I'm just all in, right? So in those 12 years, I think out of, out of those 12 years, I think 10 of those years I spent, um, at a place where I was convinced that the Bible was true. Mm -hmm. um, and I still don't uh, throw that all out. I still think there is truth in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and I still read it. I still quote it at times. Uh, I still live by it in certain aspects of my life. But 
Um, in the last two years, uh, around the age of 28, I took uh, a lot of diligence in myself to say, yo, I need to study more about who I am, right? Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself to look up my last name, which is Blackburn. Black burn, like I burned myself on the stove, you know, black burn, that's my last name. So when I looked up this name, um, I found two people uh, named by the, uh, goes by the name of uh, Lucy and Thornhill Blackburn. And I did some research on them and I came to find out that they were actually involved with Harriet Tubman. And they did a lot of work for the Underground Railroad. And they helped a lot of blacks free, get free from slavery through the Underground Railroad to escape the states to get to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was doing that research, it just, it just gave me a desire to study more about black history. And I've always been into my people. I've always been into my race. I always love uh, the black melanin skin. And I always had a, I want to say, I always adored it. You know, I always, even though there's such things as racism and um, they say, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to be black, but I all, even though it's hard, I still wanted to be black. I still wanted to know about blackness. I still wanted to study about it. And I gravitated towards it ever since a young boy. Um, but to stay in context, in studying Thornhill and Lucy Blackburn, <laughs> I started to grow this desire in my soul to know more and more and more and more about black people and ultimately to learn more about myself. Yeah. Um, just a little background. Um, I subscribe to being Jamaican. My father was from Jamaica, Mandeville, Jamaica. You know what I mean? Big up all my people then. Um, and my mother, she's from Brooklyn. And I believe that her nationality is African American and I believe Puerto Rican. Um, but in saying that, there's so many breakdowns when you actually study an African. Uh, you know, when you go to Africa and you go and speak with somebody in Africa, you, oh, you're an African. They'd be like, no, I'm Ethiopian. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm from Kenya. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm from Egypt. Yeah, they don't just subscribe to, yeah, I'm African. But I guess that's a Western thing that we get from America because we don't necessarily have the knowledge to know the history. Uh, so that made me more diligent in my studies. When I was a little boy, my father, before he passed, I can recall him telling me to study Marcus Garvey, to study Malcolm X. And at the time as a kid, I didn't have any idea who these people were. But when he said their names, it resonated with my soul. And their names had some validity to it, all right? Um, I didn't fully understand why at the time, uh, but I see why now at, through studying more about Malcolm X, through studying more about Marcus Garvey, knowing that he was trying to start traits for black people, ports, uh, and have our own industry, have our own uh, way of getting resources from other countries instead of relying upon just America to give us what we need when they were the ones who subjugate us to slavery, if that's the right terminology. Mm -hmm. um, but just to stay on track, back to Thorn. Thornhill and Lucy Blackburn, I had a brethren uh, by the name of Job who was doing some music on uh, the boats. He was he played the bass and yeah. he would travel <clears throat> through cruise ships. Um, and one time he went to uh, Canada and before he got to Canada, I think he was across uh, a certain 
lake or river or ocean, I can't recall where, mm -hmm. that uh, you can look from America in the States and look over and see Canada. Yeah, okay. And That's there was, crazy. He, he took a picture of the statue of this group of people. And one day I was looking on his Instagram and I looked and it said that on the statue, it said that they were the Blackbirds. Hmm. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. I'm studying about this. And my friend is out doing his own thing, has no idea what I'm studying about in my life. Yeah. And came across this statue of my ancestors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, it bugged me out because it was like, it was almost like, like, uh, I don't even know. Like, it was just like an epiphany. You know, it was just like something in the air was telling me you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Right. So as I continue to study, uh, it got me to a place where I started to question a lot of things that I was learning in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because some of the questions I had when I would bring, bring them up to Bible scholars or pastors or biblical teachers, they had no answers for me. Like what? Um, is Jesus black? Every college um, professor was, ever, was Adam and Eve black. Every college professor I never know has said that they were probably black. So I don't know why you're saying that people have answered for it. I have college professors that in Bible college that would tell me that. Right. I hear that. So I, you know, so I don't see a conspiracy because that's I already knew that, but then I had people confirm that. You know what I mean? Like you know, I, white college well, professors. Well, the, the answer that <laughs> yeah. I was getting back from these people was. Yeah, he might have been black or he might have been Palestinian. He lived in the Middle East, so he really couldn't be no white man. All right, so I, I respect that. But, okay, so if you know he's black, if these co college professors profess to know that he was a man of color, my next question that I posed to them was, why is every image I see of him white? Well, it's an easy answer. It's because those were uh, um, art. It was art from like the Roman Catholic Church. They were the first ones to ever do that type of stuff. So they and they had that type of money to make art that beautiful back then. So that stuff got spread around because those were the first type of images. And then just like any other image, um, over time it just died out. You know, um, it's dying out by now because people. Uh, you know, knowledge is more spread around now, but um, over time, you know, people just adopted that because there was really nobody else making art on that level because it wasn't like now where you can just print something up like that, you know what I'm trying to say? So, um, again, you know, conceding the point, not conceding, it's truth that people uh, used the Bible um, to try to uh, make people, you know, to, uh, to keep slaves on, you know, uh, black people down and pe keep black people as slaves. Uh, you know, that's horrible. But again, there's a lot of tools that are used that are bad. And it doesn't mean that the tool itself is bad. Mm -hmm. It just means that somebody used the tool in a bad way. <coughs> that's how I look at it. Cool. So I'm, I'm more subjective to it where it's just like, I don't really know what truth is, man. Um, but I, th I do know what truth is. Let me not say that. I do know what truth is. And I, we know truth when, we, when it clicks in our head and, um, you know, in certain things, you know, as far as spiritually, you know, when, and when you rub, rub into truth, but it's hard to nail it down about this story and this history or, or you know, um, what is, you know, the stories that we use to convey truth, like just like what we do with movies, just like what we're doing right now with the podcast using video is what we, we're, we're telling these stories to convey certain truths. Like when you look about, when you look at Iron Man, this Iron Man an example, what, you know, what truths are taught in that movie? Or well, this guy that's a jerk that uh, his company was uh, selling all, all these weapons that were killing people in other countries. Um, he finds that out in a bad way. He changes his life because he almost dies. Um, he now um, sacrifices his life as being the Iron Man 
to uh, to a greater cause instead of being a selfish person. And then if you look at the end of Endgame, spoiler alert, where he dies, you know what I mean? That is a sacrifice, right? Doesn't that remind you of another story? Doesn't mean that the Bible is true. That doesn't mean that that Jesus died on a cross 2,000 years ago. I believe that, but just because if you don't believe that, that truth told in a different story still had the same effect on people because it's in people's hearts. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So the way I'm looking at it is like, again, it, there is truth to be known and you, when you feel it, you feel it. Like when you watch the whole, if you watch the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe and the story they tell, those guys are Christians who made it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're just telling old stories that are in the human heart that we know that are right, right? Of self-sacrifice and, and courage and, um, and, and bravery in the, in the face of, uh, of evil, things like that. You know what I mean? To defend people. Um, we know that those are good things, and I think that um, that those things that we are know know are truths. So I don't want to spend time arguing with people about the story around those truths. I just want to mine every type of thought so we can find those truths that that match, and then we can have a uh, a more a more connected society. You know what I mean? Because now we have basic truths, even though we we don't believe. We don't all agree on where these truths come from, the, all that different avenues. We don't have to believe in all that stuff because are we ever going to know which one is really true in our lifetime unless Jesus comes back or Muhammad or then, we, then we're going to know. When we die, then we're going to know, right? Or maybe, or maybe not. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to say. So why argue about all those things and why keep it in my mind about who, who did to what when it's just like, you know what? I only have fucking 70 years, bro. You know what I mean? Like, so I got to take that 70 years and make it worth something. So I need to find truths where I can, ever I can find it. So then when they're those warm truths that keep people together and that um, are able to build my life, to build their lives, um, then um, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? Then, then I think that's a good thing. Like, for example, I'm married. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to live my life and my marriage um, I don't say that we live exactly, exactly biblical, but we do have uh, the same biblical, we use the same biblical framework, but at the same time, we understand that there's room for us to be, uh, be who we are. You know what I mean? I don't, you know, so the way, so what I would say is what you have a problem with is the way, let's use marriage for example, the way marriage may be taught in the church. I've had conversations with a couple of other people about how I perceived it to be taught in the church, but um. <clears throat> And that's a side note, but we hear something like, you know, women submitting to men. So we have a certain understanding of what that means. And then now we run off with that understanding. And maybe that person that was preaching said that's what it meant. And maybe they were wrong or maybe they were right. But we have to be taking responsibility on ourselves, even if we believe to be like, damn, I believed it. Not to be like, oh, this person said it. So this person's evil. It's like, you know what? I don't know exactly where, if it was me, if it was them, who can, who can count why, why you follow something at a certain time, at, at a certain way. Um, so I'm like, all I can do is take responsibility for, okay, oh yeah, I interpreted that wrong. Or, you know what I mean? So or, or I t interpreted what this person said when that person, what he said was really false and I didn't check into it. Or I interpret thank you. Or I interpreted this wrong and I said, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I understand that, um, so, so yeah, so at the end of the day, I, I, I got to understand that I got to live my life every day. Again, my marriage, going back to marriage, my family, I need a structure to make that work. You know what I mean? I need, so when I look at that, I'm like, oh, well, that helps me now, now that I see that naturally my wife does submit to me when I act in certain <clears throat> ways then I'm going to do that. That's going to make us both happy. Now, does everybody have to subscribe to that? No. Mm -hmm. All I know is that I got to af affect my family first. After I affect my family, then I got to affect my community around me, the people that my next door neighbors here. Um, you know, when, when Christmas time is up, we might see what's going on with them. My neighbor, his wife died a couple of months, you know, a month, about, about a year ago. You know what I mean? Am I, am I keeping up with him? Like my literal neighbors, you know, like Jesus said, or maybe whatever. It doesn't matter who said it, but um, 
my literal neighbors and then my brothers, but people at my work, like if, I, if I'm being a light to them, if I'm being loved to them and showing them the example, looking at myself first, and that's how I look at it. And I think that people took that and said, oh, you look at yourself first, you, you know, like as far as slavery, like, oh, you know, don't run away from your good master, look at you. And I think that people use those um, uh, principles of humility and uh, use it against people that didn't know the language that were weaker minded because they didn't have any education because they were stolen from another country. You see what I'm saying? Um, but again, it's the same baseball bat analogy I was using. Like a baseball bat, if I hit you over the head with it, then it's an evil tool. But if I uh, go play baseball with it with my son, then it's not that evil. You know what I mean? So again, it's just a tool. So I'm, I'm very wary of calling any tool 100% evil because I got to hold myself responsible on what if I use that tool wrong or if I was too into it, if I just listened to somebody else and somebody else. I could go point the finger all day at somebody else, but at the end of the day, I needed to know. And if it, if it didn't happen at that certain time, I know now. You know what I mean? So I don't have to reject the baby. I don't have to throw the baby with the bathwater to uh, understand that there's stories that are in the Bible that are just like the Tony Stark story that, that show us bravery and courage in ways that we can lead. Like for example, this is one example, lead as men or even lead in, in a different way that a woman may, may lead. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think the Bible has all the answers and very specific things, mm -hmm. but that's kind of what I've changed on. Like what I used to think. I that respect. I, I respect mean. those. I respect you know the things that you're saying, and I still think those are commendable things. I want to go as far as to say I do love all people, right? I have friendships with all types of races, uh, to white, black, Spanish, whoever. Uh, but my love for all people will not make me blind, right? My love for mankind will not make me blind to the way they treat my kind. You understand what I'm saying? My love for mankind will not make me blind to the way they treat my kind. Yeah, but... Now, hold up. Let me finish the statement. Well, no, 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 let me ask you a question. You, got, you can't just move on. You need to define what you mean. I think what, it's plain. What, no, it's not. Go ahead. What, is, what do you define as being blind? to what they did to your kind and what do you think we should do about that? Because I feel like we all want a better world. Well, for the people who want to seek out truth and want the betterment of all people, we all want a better world and we all want a fruitopia with all races, right? This is what I'm defining. When I say my kind, I'm talking about black, right? When I say I love all mankind, I'm talking about all races, right? But because I have a love for all people and I want to see all people do better, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that all people have the same intent. Yeah, for sure. So, because I have an intent to see all of you do better, mm -hmm. but on the flip side, the people don't have that insane intent for me. Mm -hmm. So, because I have that intent for you, I'm not going to be blind to the fact you don't have that intent for me. Yeah, but... If you start to say that that's divided by race, I've had conversations with plenty of my friends and black people do the same shit. So I don't look at it as black people, white people, whoever. I'm just looking at, yeah, I have it all from mankind, but I'm not going to separate it by race. You got because, but, but listen, because there's assholes, white people, asshole black people, good black people, so fuck I all agree. the race shit. Like, I, I just look at people as what they are. What? So I'm never going to say, oh, this kind has its way to look at me. I got to look at you as an that's individual. Because, well, no, that's, that's, what, that's what racism well, is. Racism is saying, like, yo, this you is just because you have that race, you now have this trait. That's racism because that's not scientific. Do you all think that stuff. That Based on science, exists? it's fucking racist. Do you think that exists? exists? Yeah, what? A racism. Yeah, of course. Who created it? Every human being has been like that from the beginning of time. Human beings are always want to be want to be uh, separate from other people. So even if you look at what's happening, what happens in Trinidad, there's still racism within those people. The same thing in, in, in Haiti. There's racism within those people, and they're all Haitians. So it's I, like so. I don't necessarily so, disagree. With well, that so thing. so. But, well, well, maybe make my point. No, no, let me finish my point. Well, well, let me finish. my to have uh, the mentality to be like, I know that it's built in human beings because when we were evolving, we needed that because we needed to know who the enemy was. 
But now that time has progressed and we're down further in time, we know that, okay, that mechanism, we don't, that was built in us for self-defense. We don't need that anymore. And so I'm not going to prescribe, uh, prescribe myself to something that is, uh, that's going to divide on that because I know that's just something that's built in human beings and it's an ugly thing and that uh, we just have to get away from it because people just hate on people. So um, for me, I'm going to look at, every, because I know that's a fact, now I'm going to look at you as an individual. If you still have that mentality, then you're stuck in the past. You're stuck into something that's that's stupid. To, 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 to find somebody on, on, on uh, a chemical that's in somebody's skin, that's retarded, bro. Okay. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a disinject real quick. I've been a victim of this. I don't know about you, but I have. Mm -hmm. When I was five years old, there were some white kids throwing rocks at cars, mm -hmm. right? They were throwing rocks at cars at our bus stop. Mm -hmm. They hit this one car. This white dude pulled around. He did a U-turn, pulled around, jumped out of his car, and instead of walking up to white guys, he walked up to me. Mm -hmm. He looked me at my face. He walked. I was only five years old, right? I uh, could have been maybe six or seven. I don't really remember. It was kind of blurry. But he walked up to my face and he said, You dumb nigger! <gasps> and spit in my face. Spit in my face. Mm -hmm. Did I make that up? Or was that not racist? That was racist, yeah. right? All right. So what I'm dealing with is white and blacks. Do I not? Hold on. Do I He's not? So do I not? Even worse. Do I not? <laughs> You can't base it off the of worst of all our experiences. No, but you're assuming that I've never experienced it. I didn't say that. You didn't I've say never it, said you're that. assuming You're that. assuming that. Because no. I've never said that. I don't that. think so. You're assuming that. Yeah. That came out of your mouth. I never you, said no, you never said your experience. I, I didn't less say you said mind. that. I didn't say that you said that. I was just bringing up one of my yeah. experiences. Yeah, yeah. I, and I had multiple experiences with this. Yeah. That's just one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, let me get back to what I was saying. I'm not saying that black people don't have hatred for other black people. That is true, right? Mm -hmm. Do I think it tr traits back even before slavery? It, it does. It might does. I don't. I don't it fully. Does. I don't fully know because I. I truly actually subscribe to the fact we weren't on that shit. We were loving. We loved each other. But being Bro. brought. Hold on. Let me speak. I let yeah. you speak. I was quiet. I didn't. I didn't inject it when you were speaking. Yeah. I gave you a little time to speak. Yeah. When we were in Africa or wherever we would have was was wherever the fuck it was before slavery, I don't think our ancestors subscribed to hating each other, and we can't sit here and necessarily necessarily decree because just like you just said, we don't know what the fuck was going on back then. They could have been in happiness, no, we, loving we, each we other, know. right? We do know. There's just all right, but I, I'm that. just I'm just I'm just putting it in the air. But basically, what I'm saying is, I do agree that there is. Black on black hatred. I also know that some of this hatred was created from slavery. Did it exist before then? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It might have. It might have not. Yeah. It's all subjective. It's not but right. I do I know, know I, I do right know some of it was created by being I agree. one being a house nigga, one being a field nigga. I agree. One nigga being an Uncle Tom, one nigga being uh, just subjected to well, rape. I, I don't want to say right? you can't just say it's created. It was just another form of it because that shit was always. At the end of the day, when you do something mentally to, to bring out an outcome, that's creating something. Period. Yeah, I know, but period. No, period. it's not. That's not period. If I rape a woman to, but, to, that's not, but you didn't create rape, bro. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if a man and I, I, I'm gonna take that back because I will never rape a woman. <laughs> I love women. I respect women. I look at women as queens. So let me take that back. In history, when white men raped with black women, they did it with an intent to dilute, dilute this culture, right? They yeah. did it with an intent. So they created other races from rape. Yeah. They created something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm getting at is this. I'm not dealing with black on black hate right now. We can talk about that because that is a but subject. That's not what I said. Hold on, I didn't bring up hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm no, talking, nobody brought up black and black. You brought you're, it up. You're, you're, you brought up. No, I, let me tell you what you brought. Up. Yeah. Let me let me quote what you brought up. You brought up how can you talk about white people hating black people if black people hate black people? That's not what I said. 
I'm, yeah, quote, I'm paraphrasing. That's not what I so said. So go ahead and say what You're changing my argument. Ahead, so wait, you're not arguing. So what that is called a straw man. So what you just so what I really said was I said, well, in Trinidad, that's what happens. That's, I'm not just talking about black people. I'm saying in China, they do that. You're in saying Ireland, people they of the do same that. same race, whether black, white, whoever, yeah. hate on each other. Yeah, but, you, but right. you said I brought up black and black crime, and I didn't do that. I'm bringing that up. Yeah, that's what I said. What I'm, what I'm saying, I said, I said what I'm saying is this. Yes, I didn't bring it up. I'm saying this. I'm saying, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right but please, I didn't I'm, do I'm that. starting to get frustrated, and I don't want to be on Yeah, but, you say, but you're changing my argument. Like, can we talk with some type of respect? But you're changing my argument. There's no point of fucking argument. But you're disrespecting me by changing my argument. I didn't call you no name. I didn't call you out your name. This is what I'm saying. We're talking about some other but things. How am I But you're changing my argument. You're not, you take this. Listen, is what I'm I a said. human being. I can make mistakes. There's okay. such thing as okay. called human error. Why would you say that you did that? All right. I don't know oh. if I did. I'm trying to state something off of what you said. Did yes. I say it perfectly? Maybe not. No, no. But not, what I'm saying not, is this. What like, I'm saying is this. You stated that people of the same race have hate for each other. That's what you stated, right or wrong? Every race. All right. What I'm stating is about right and black race. That's what the fuck I'm talking okay. about. All right? So I'm not talking about that. Is that an issue? Is that a subject? Yes. Now I'm now I'm on point with what the fuck you said? All right. Now I'm on point with what the no, fuck you said. You're still not, but you can continue. You said people of the same race, whether Trinidad, China, whoever is, have hatred against each other. Yes. But that's so not what, what I brought point? up. So I'm the one point? that brought up the topic. So if anyone's changing the subject, it's you. No, no. I'm the one I that was talking about why you're black I said you changed what I said. So, what, so I'm, what I'm talking about is black and white. I'm talking about the racism that exists with black and white. Yeah. I'm not talking about black on black. I'm not talking about Asian on Asian. I'm not talking about Trinidad on Trinidad. I'm talking about black and white. Exactly. So that's the touch. So that's the topic. Okay. If anyone changed the topic, it was you. No. Because I the one that presented the topic. No, that's not true, bro. This is. This and then you injected. Off answering from my topic by bringing up Trinidad's hate Trinidad. No, no, so you can't bring up no. racism no, because was, no, this, that, and the not, third. That's not what I said. I said racism has existed long before slavery. That's all I said from the beginning. Cool. Of the, the all right. Beginning. I'm that's not stating that that's a faulty um, I know, bro, subject. But, you did, but, but, but what I was what talking did, about. You turned that listen, into saying this something. whole conversation started from a quote that I made. And that quote was I love all mankind. But the my love for mankind will make me blind to the way they treat my kind. Yeah. That's how this shit started. Yeah. So that was the original statement. That was the original topic. And I brought it up. And I asked you. So. And did you sit and answer my question? I asked you. My first thing was I said, so what do you, what do you define being blind to mankind? To your meaning, mind? meaning I'm not going to walk around like there is people out here that don't hate the color of my skin. What does that mean? Like, what exactly am I what I'm saying. Well, what, what am I supposed to do if I don't care what they fucking think? Right, but that that's on that's Fuck on them. you and your family. For me, I have to be subjective. I have to say, should I walk around acting blind? Should I walk around and act like this motherfucker don't hate me and okay. treat him with all the love and compassion and serve him well, and do all this shit for him when I know he would not do well, the same I, for well, me and mine? Well, that's what I but. But that, but I do that to any individual, and if but and that's you, and, and that's not something I'm choosing no, but to listen, do. But, but listen, what I'm saying, and every individual of any other race could be negative towards you. But if you're saying that that there you go, changing old, the subject again. That, you're changing the subject. I'm, again. You, I'm not talking about any other individual of the same race. I'm talking about white people. Period. So yeah, so that's what. Period. You're so you're saying that just because they're white, they're racist? Is that what you're saying? I know. I'm talking. I'm talking. You. I said I agree with your statement. Anyone can be racist. You can be racist up to yeah, your own yeah. people. You can race. But I'm talking about the racism that exists. Can I? Can I step in? And can white I step people. in? Go ahead. To clarify what he's saying with that statement is specifically to the experience of what he being experienced in his life. Yeah. With white people. And the whole reason why I got here is because of what I'm studying. Mm -hmm. The more I studied about the black race, the more I felt more questions that I had with the biblical context of the Bible, which I felt people didn't answer, which you asked me, what was that? And I said, why is Jesus white? You 
said, oh, that's a, that's because the artist, are, and I don't want to even paraphrase you because I don't want to be wrong, but whatever, whatever was said, and that's how we got into the whole Shabil about racism. Mm -hmm. The reason I even made this statement about I love all mankind was because I was about to make another statement, and I wanted people to understand that I'm not just some pro-black dude that don't have no love for white people. Because I do. Mm. I see white people and I respect them as human beings. Mm. They're human. But at the end of the day, I'm not, just because I respect you, I'm not going to let you disrespect me. Mm -hmm. And that's what the quote means. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, back to what I was originally going to get to, which is the real statement, was this. Shout out to David Banner. I was watching a podcast with David Banner or a YouTube interview. And he actually, it was Hidden Colors. Uh, it, they have one, two, three, and four, and five. There are different movies. A movie's coming out right now, Hidden Color 5, and it has a bunch of different people, rappers, uh, uh, debaters, different people from di relig different religion backgrounds who are talking about the history of black people. Why? Because we know the history that were given to us about black people has been bullshit. They have literally killed our people burnt our history, and told us a bunch of bullshit. And that's why black people argue so much. Because we can't, we, we, we got so many different misconstrues understanding of who the fuck we are. Or this one think this way, this black dude this thinks this way, I think this way, and we can't come to no fucking agreement because we've been taught so much different shit. Right? The main thing I was going to get at was David Banner said this. He said the reason why he really has a problem with the white Jesus because he feels like that does something to the black man's psychology. That does something to the black man's psyche. Mm -hmm. Where we see this black, this white man, we pray to this white man, and that goes into our DNA, that goes down to our children, and it allows us to look at the white man as Jesus, yeah, yeah. right? When I see a, a movie about a hero, you brought up Iron Man and him being a sacrifice and all this shit. Cool, whatever. Because I, I think the white people should have heroes, right? But so should black people, right? Bro, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. All through history, we see white people put on a pedestal. Superman, all these different... How many superheroes are there in Marvel? How many black men? The Black Shit. Panther. Oh. Right? So, with, with all these people being put on a pedestal, it puts it in our mind to always forgive them. Same thing with the white, the white pigment of the picture or... Um, the image of Christ. He's white. So when we look at white people, we almost look at them as Christ. And we forgive them for all the fucked up shit they're doing. The rape, the murder, the killing, the, the conquering, the pillaging, right? You good? Yeah, I'm right. Go ahead. Right? We, 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 we turn on the cheek because we suck psychology in our psyche, we viewing them as Jesus. And I'm going to prove how science proves this to be true. There was a study of little kids, right? And you can go look this up for yourself, the people out there. It's on YouTube. Where little kids were given a choice between a black and a white dog. Yeah, you're talking about the unconscious and they asked, bias. And they asked which one is beautiful and which one is ugly. Mm -hmm. And they asked all different type of races of little kids. Mm -hmm. Right? And every kid that got on that motherfucker said the white doll was pretty and beautiful and the black doll was ugly. Mm -hmm. So this is proven in science that our culture, especially in Western culture, I don't know too much about other cultures, but I know that racism still exists in Puerto Rico, still exists in the Virgin Islands because I see slave ports there, mm -hmm. still exists in others in, in the Caribbean islands, in Jamaica, in, in Haiti. In Dominican Republic, 
and all these other places. In England, there's black people in Greece. We, we discuss it a lot, right? Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot that you can go back and forth, but I, the, what I said before is, I'm not too interested in arguing around the specifics of the story around the truths. I still think there are truths that we can find that we can live a better life. So, with that being said, my question is, what's the solution? What do we do uh, knowing that, okay, that there's, there's racism in this world and there's racism specifically with white people in this world um, and I go on living my life, you know what I mean? Like, um, what... What, what is my response? Maybe this is a question. What is my responsibility to that? Do I have any responsibility to change that? Because for me, I, if I want to answer the question, I'll try to do it real quick. I'll just say, I, I believe it is yes. You know what I mean? Like that's for example. That's why I'm having these conversations. This is why I wanted to do something like this because I like to listen to a whole bunch of different points of view. And um, I think that we, instead of arguing about some of the things, I think sometimes we get caught in a fight and, be, and not realizing that we spent so much time in the fight that we didn't help nobody. Yeah. We maybe helped people with knowledge, but there's stuff that we could have done or shit. Not that we didn't help anybody. I don't think that's true. I think people can hear things and, and learn. Sense. But, but you know, to go to actually go and put it out we into the world. get caught up in the defense that we never realized we ever came up with a solution. Yeah, exactly. So I would say, so the question again is, do you think that we have a, what do you, what do you think your responsibility is? To change that, or, um, or should it be changed, or can you even do it? What, what do you think? Um, I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to dealing with these type of topics, uh, because you don't want to just, you know, stir up strife for the sake of stirring up strife. You want to, you want to stir things up to get a good mixture so that things could taste good. Like when you stir your food. You stir it so that all the seasoning and all of the the, the gets into the meat yeah, and the yeah. juices blend together, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the most important thing is like, how do we come up with a solution? And everything you said about that is is questions that I pose to myself. Mm. Is it possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I do it? Can I do it on my own? No. Um, <laughs> what is my responsibility? Um, for me, recently, I just had my first son, um, and I was talking a little bit about this off camera, but I feel like I, the starting point for me was saying, I can't allow my kids to go through life the same way that I did. Yeah, you're working for corporations, working for people don't give a fuck about and, you. And one of the things that I still kind of hold against my parents, my father is deceased. And my mother is still alive, but even my father, just as much as my mother, mm -hmm. I hold a resentment, an anger to them not helping me figure out a solution to have a defense against this evil world. Whether it's black people, black on black crime and black on black hate, whether it's white people. Well, it's just the whole system, just, the just whole hate structure, and yeah. wickedness, fighting against yeah. wickedness, people. Well, just trying to survive, I understand, because everybody struggles with that, and some people more than others, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. And because of certain things that happened in the past, that like we just talked about racism, not, that's not past, that's now, but um, but slavery, all that other stuff. So, um, so for sure, I definitely agree with you on that. And, uh, you know, one thing that I try to do is that, again, I, I try to keep things in the realm of my responsibility. And that's why I asked you the question, like, are you, you think you're responsible? Because like the way I think is that I, if I, I'll get anxious, literally, I'll get anxious inside when I think, when I try to control things that are out of side of my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then I get uh, abusive. You know what I mean? Not physically abusive, but I mean like I get angry, you know? So for me, um, and that's like something that goes on in my family life. When I say abusive, I shouldn't, you know what I mean? I don't mean that way. When I say abusive, it's, I don't mean it in the way that people may think. I mean, I get in a way where I'll, I'll start yelling at my kids and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Instead of trying to teach them, I'm yelling. You know what I mean? So anyways, so after the definition of abusive, we get, but I, so for me, I, the, that's how I think. I think like, okay, what is in the realm of our responsibility? Okay, well. I have children, I have a family, I gotta keep that together and give them the best environment they can so they can grow up better than me, right? I need to look at the past 
opportunities that I've squandered and realize I need to get some shit together so I so they can have a better life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's where I'm at in my life. So when I look at that and I when I even thinking about me with my kids, I put myself in your dad's shoes and go, maybe and I'm not trying to make an excuse for your father. That's a whole other situation that you know more than me. But when I, when I put myself in his shoes, I go, well, for most of my life, I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. Before I had kids, I was 24. I didn't know shit. You know what I mean? When I had children, I was mad young. I was even younger than that, like 22. You know, so um, so when I look at that, I'm like, maybe they just didn't know. They just made um, bad life choices, you know what I mean? Because I think, and I'm again, I'm saying the choices that I've made. And then you learn from those choices. So it's hard to judge them if you put yourself in someone's shoes. But the point is, like, that's where I, I'm always coming at, where it's just like, it's hard to judge um, good and evil at the end of the day. But I feel like my responsibility is to be able to spread that positivity and find something that I agree with with somebody. You know what I mean? It can be about sports. It can be about, we even disagree. That we, uh, we agree that we like the NBA or the NFL or whoever I'm talking to. Doesn't mean that person's in my inner circle, in my family circle, or in the, in the circle with my brothers right now. Doesn't mean that they're in that circle. But it means that I spread some positivity and maybe whatever they thinking about me may change. Maybe not. That's, and again, that's, I'm thinking about in the job that I do now. I'm in a say, I'm in their home, but I'm coming in in uniform and in a, you know what I mean? It's different than when you're on the street, you know what I mean? And that's what I mean by like this, in my every interaction with someone, whether I'm in uniform or not, you know what I mean? But, um, it, you know, if I sense something like that from somebody else, I'm just going to show them something different, you know what I mean? <coughs> and then make them look stupid. And if they don't want, and if they, stay, stay wanna, they still want to stay believing in race and believing in black and white and these things that were made on plantations and dividing people that way, if, if, if people want to stay on that, they can stay on that. I'm, I'm not dividing on that anymore. I'm trying to say, okay, those things should matter to you and define who you are, but we can still come together on things that are... are are deep or that are, are minuscule, but not but not everybody has to relate with everybody. That's just the bottom line. There's too many damn people. <laughs> There's just too many damn people. I can't even fucking remember everybody, bro. You know what I'm trying to say? Let's say put one of these freaking phones in my head and augmented reality or whatever. I can't remember that. So I only can deal with the people that I'm dealing with, bro. And again, I uh, my whole thing is I look take everybody. This is the last thing I'll say on a case to case basis. I look at you and I'll judge you as a person. It doesn't matter what the pigment of your skin is, it doesn't matter what sex you are. I may have my prejudices, but I need to be open to that and be so I'm not using that, you know what I mean, to define somebody before they define themselves. And once they define themselves, then I can defend myself against them. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna let them define themselves, you know what I'm saying? I think the best way I could tackle that uh, question is just to prove that um, even though I have questions and disagreements with the Bible, I also have standpoints where I feel like the Bible is right. There's a scripture in the Bible that said you can't be a leader in the church until you lead in your household. And I believe that statement. And I believe that's a logical thing. Mm-hmm. So for me, I can't find a solution for mankind mm-hmm. until I have a solution for my mm-hmm. household. Yep. Right. There you go. Um, to to rebuttal on the family thing, I still don't feel like that's an excuse for my mother and father, because oh, okay. just as much as they didn't know, I did. Okay. Okay. So it, it wasn't an excuse for you. That it's not an excuse for me either. I agree. Right. So if it ain't an excuse for me, yeah. it ain't an excuse for me. Yeah. I ain't no shit. Yeah. Right. I dropped out of high school. I was kicked out of high school. I tried to go back. I was kicked out. Then. I, I went back and I went and got my shit. I went and got my diploma. Then I went to college. Then I found out this shit ain't doing shit for me anyway. Mm-hmm. I should have just fucking stopped in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then it got to a point where it literally became me against the world. Because no one in the world was uh, telling me it was possible. Everyone in the world, to my mother, to teachers, to uh, pastors, we're saying you have to go to school. You have to get this degree. The school was saying you have, but no school was teaching me. You can just be your own business, man. Mm-hmm. You could just own your own shit. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to work for no one else, work for yourself. Mm-hmm. No one was, because that's where the key is at. Mm-hmm. That's the key to black slavery. And to me, 
you said, uh, I hope that they don't want to be caught up in racism. But to me, unless you figure out the solution, which is to me, your own ownership, you're yeah. going to be caught up in yeah. slavery. You're going to be a slave, whether yeah, you're yeah, white, yeah. black, Spanish, whoever, yeah, yeah, yeah. because this shit is a system now. Mm -hmm. So my son, like I said, he's eight months years old. I just started my own company and I made my son the partner share of my company, which is Roof Life. I mean, not Roof Life. Mm -hmm. That's the company I currently work for right now Roof as control. I build my company. But my, my company is actually called Roof Control LLC. And my son is a part owner of that. Mm -hmm. That's my solution. Instead of talking, instead of being confused, yeah. I said, this is the action I'm going to yeah, make. Sure, sure, sure. So that no matter what happens, if my son doesn't feel like he's making it in school, he has something to run back to and make a means for himself. Yeah, can I say something? Go ahead. Um, I think I 100%, uh, no, I think, I know I'm 100% agree with you because I think this all the time, even without before this conversation that my like I said as far as personal responsibility what I meant is exactly what you're saying it's like self-ownership knowing that so that means it, uh, accepting the faults um, too you know what I mean and admitting the faults of, of yourself too but it also does mean that um, you're going to take uh, responsibility on yourself to do everything that you can within the means that, sh that you see in this world to be able to create something that that um that sustains life, right? I'm talking about your family, you know what I mean? Like that's that that's what and we need to have that that personal freedom and not to be able to have that mindset is that we gotta rely on other people to do it. Now, do we do it by ourselves? No. But we, we gotta rely on the people. Okay, well what can we come together on so that we can see the common sense shit and, and knock this shit out. You know what I mean? Because there's even room to work. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? And and I'm not saying that we, we don't do anything about it. I think we definitely can do things about it. Um, and, but it takes people getting together and recognizing it. You know what I'm trying to say? And, and, and connecting. To quote, to quote the Bible again, yeah, just to show you, I've been reading. I've been reading. <laughs> but anyways, the Bible says, if a man don't work, he don't eat. But I want you to repeat that. The Bible don't say, if a man don't have a job, <laughs> He, don't, he said if a man don't work, there's a difference between a job and work, right? One day I said, man, what the hell does a job mean? So I went and looked it up. I went and looked it up on Google because of the definition of a job. And the definition said by Google, you can search for yourself, it said to willfully do something forcefully for someone else. Sounds like a contradiction, don't it? But at the same time, it makes sense. You're willfully... <laughs> making this shit. You're willfully... Forcefully doing something for someone else. It's like, it's submitting to force, basically, what you're saying. So... Repeat that again. Willfully, by your own decision, being forced to do something someone else. Yeah, it's submitting to, to force. So, or submitting Will, to it's force. It's willfully submitting to force. Willfully submitting to force. That's exactly what it is. So, my goal to challenge people is to motherfucking work. Okay. Stop okay. getting these jobs. Make okay. these jobs. Make something. Change the concept of what a job is. Right? Yeah, there you go. Give people they work. Don't have a man work for you and then deny him his wages because the Bible says that. Yeah. It says to give a man his wages the same day he does his work for you. Not two weeks later. Not a week later. Not a month later. That, but quote unquote, by the Bible is a sin. But in God we trust, our country says. But technically, by the Bible's um, uh, scriptures, it, our workforce, our government is sin. Right? So this goes into the first podcast that we had, which was saying, see the power in people. See the power in your neighbor. See the power in every individual because these companies cannot exist without you. Hey, maybe it's this. See right. the power in yourself. In yourself. Because and then you can invest that in the other people. And then if they, right. and the people that see that vibe will 
go with you the people that and, and, and actually and, you get some and, 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 and not use no, a nigga too not, 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 and, and don't use a nigga either you well, know what's crazy well listen <laughs> <laughs> how the country runs. Now, don't get me wrong, man. I'm not trying to overthrow the country, man. <laughs> I don't want the feds coming to me. You understand? I don't want... <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the government was not built to be in control. It was built to help the people. So somewhere along the line, our government lost their focus. Maybe not lost, maybe just actually just like, yo, we we're going to take this. over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's never been about government. It's been about people. And that's what this country was exactly. supposed to be built on. Exactly. So technically, I shouldn't be an enemy of the state. Mm -hmm. If anything, I'm someone who, who represents the real the people, concept man. of America. Yeah, exactly. The exactly. real concept yes. of America. That's what All it colors, yes. creeds, exactly. religions, and people. 100%. Let's come together. Uh, Let's fuck. stop hating each other. Yeah. Yes, there's going to be some hard things we're going to have to discuss. Yeah, we got them. Yeah, there's going to be some things we're going to have to learn and about each other. And this is just things that we can agree to disagree on and still fuck Move with each other. Out, bro. Because at the end of the day, there's basic logic. We all got to eat. Yeah. We all got kids. Yeah. We all need shelter. Jermaine ain't got no kids. He's talking about. Nope. <laughs> I'm 30 and old. No, I'll let you up. Go ahead, but what I, I am did, looking for someone. I was like, you know. This is the purpose of life. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Jermaine don't got kids because of this world system. Yeah, both. Definitely maybe. true. That's See, okay. Maybe, maybe That's Jermaine true. has a desire to have a busload of kids, a football team. But he chooses. Uh, nah, nah, <laughs> but he talking chooses. about a term, this all. <laughs> but he chooses. Not to because of the circumstances which he was faced with. So yeah, he yeah, chooses no, I, to yeah. be more careful until he gets to a place where he can provide. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's smart. Yeah, I mean, for him, for sure. The truth, the truth was, <laughs> Good job, Jermaine. A lot Good of us who got kids was trying to do the same damn thing. On, come on, come on, come but life don't Jermaine. always work out how you plan it. That's <laughs> why they say, Jermaine. say God willing. Jermaine, he didn't get I'm glad, I'm glad. Thank you. But I don't know. <laughs> but guess what? I don't know if necessarily that's what we're supposed to be doing. God said be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say keep your sperm to yourself. So technically, what is that? I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. I just want to make a point. I just want to make sure it's going to be the right person. We're supposed to be. You're supposed to be Let me say something. Let me say something before before we just end it though. But you're right. That that warm feeling of like yo. Because, and I know people are going to go through it. And let me not say, like, this is, I'm not trying to just be all corny and positive, but, like, because you're going to go through it where you want it to be negative. But, like, the fact of the matter is, if that's where your energy is going, that's what it's going to be. You know what I'm trying to say? But if you try to make that change, you know what I mean? And I know a lot of people who try to make that change and they got roped up. Well, I understand. Hmm. I understand. We could go through the damn thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm just trying to do it in my small little circle. You know what I'm trying to say? That's with it. the people that run across me, because that's what I'm, what I'm responsible for. You know what I mean? And and that's all I can be responsible for. You know what I'm trying to say? So, if I did do negative things to you, I know I have. I, I do apologize, because, like, it's not even about extremely moderate. It's about me growing to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you make stupid decisions. You know what I mean? But I, at the end of the day, we all growing. Hopefully, we can you know, continue to grow together with what we think and how we act to it. You know what I'm saying? So with that, we out. You know what I mean? Check us out. We'll be back with some more content. We uh, we don't know what we're going to talk about. It kind of comes together as we come come together. You know what I'm saying? So just stay tuned and we hope that we edify in you. Let me let me let the cameraman hop up in here. Just to uh, carry on what you said, also too, if you're watching, 
Uh, you can comment down below if there's anything, any deep um, discussions that you guys want us to talk about. Word. You can definitely go ahead and comment. Word. We'll shout you out. And Word. you can actually pick and choose who you want to talk about it in the group yeah. if you want. Yeah. It depends. You did. Just be vocal, man. Yeah, you, you already us. know. We appreciate y'all, man. We hope y'all continue to stay tuned. All right, man. Yeah. I like your boy. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked, liked it, go ahead and hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more conversations, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button, share, whatever. Y'all already know. Make sure y'all share that thing. Put it on Facebook. Holla at your boy, man. Y'all already know. We appreciate y'all. Yeah, one thing we want you guys to do is just add some uh, stuff in the comments. Have conversations. You actually can influence what we talk about. So if you go ahead and uh, put some topic suggestions up in the comments section, we'll go ahead and... Uh, Decide which ones we want to talk about, and then we'll go ahead and make more content for you. So, uh, thank you, and we out.